at Fort Belvoir, Virginia. And that was in several capacities. He was the NCO IC, and I understand that's a non-commissioned officer in charge, of the United States Army's Safeguard Anti-Ballistic Missile Program at the Department of Defense in Washington, D.C. He lives with his wife, Sally, in Hanover, Pennsylvania, and they are both members of the Board of Directors for the Hanover Historical Society, where he is also co-chairman of the Museum Committee. And I, I think Sally's somewhere in the audience, isn't she? Okay, she's in the back there. They are also volunteer curators here at the Eisenhower National Historic Site. And Ken is also a trustee of the Eisenhower Society, which also, of course, is here in Gettysburg. And they are friends of the Hanover Public Library. So ladies and gentlemen, I now present Mr. Ken Weiler, who will take over. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Hold the applause. You haven't heard anything yet, so don't get too excited. Um, First of all, if I happen to wander away from this thing, let me know. When I lecture, I usually walk around up and down the aisles, and if, then if you can't hear me, just wave me back to this thing, and I'll be happy to, uh, to get started. So anyway, good morning. Thank you for coming. I appreciate you showing your interest in the other side of Normandy, as one of my other blog persons said I should have subtitled the book, the uh, activities that were going on 1,200 miles to the east in Belarus in that very fateful month of June 1944. You're going to hear June, June, June quite a bit during this because a lot of things happened in June and the month of June at the latitudes in Belarus and Russia really is, it equates to almost our early May. The Rasputita in Russian means as the fall and spring rains and thaw render most of the unpaved roads in, in Russia almost impassable uh, to which the German Wehrmacht found out to its regret in 1941, 42, 43, and 44. Um, it uh, slows things down and really doesn't begin to dry out. Next, military activities, even from the previous two invaders, Charles V and Napoleon I found out that same this difficult transition in what they thought was a fully paved nation like they were experiencing in France and England. They crossed the border out of Poland into Russia, and you really almost enter an entirely new portion, but actually you're in uh, far western Asia at that point. Uh, the Soviet Union, um, under the duress of a totalitarian nation, brought that country really into the first world group after the conclusion of World War II, uh, especially when considering that they started on the very eastern borders, uh, uh, west, the eastern borders of Poland, and by May 1945 they literally stood in the center of, European, of, the, of the European continent. Uh, it was always one of the Russian, as far as dreams, to bring the Russian nation into the embrace of the cosmopolitan, the modern European, and most importantly, ice-free ports for them to trade with the rest of the world. Um, so with that said, let me get an idea of who is familiar at all or has never heard of the Eastern Front in World War II. Okay. How many have never heard of Operation Bagration? Okay, just want to get an idea of how far back into the, into the World War II I need to start. Um, one of the things I did when I first started putting the manuscript together about eight or nine years ago, after researching this for about 35, or 35 to 38 years, is that this started as basically a doctoral thesis and a very, very narrow thing I was going to pursue with my work at the uh, University of Virginia in Charlottesville. It was about a 150-page dissertation that was very dry, it was very academic, and to be quite blunt, it was boring as hell. <laughs> it wasn't until I did some uh, substitute teaching here when we finally moved, finally I say, moved to uh, Pennsylvania in 2003, I did some substitute teaching in the local uh, school systems in Adams County, and I thought, this is just like graduate school. You know, they're gonna be so happy to see me show up <laughs> and be their substitute teacher for 40 minutes. And boy, was I disillusioned, you know. <laughs> Gone was that camaraderie with a professor that you were on peer levels and you were talking about, you know, the great things in academia and all they saw was some guy coming in with gray hair and it was a 40-minute recess program, so. But what I did gain from that one year's experience was I used to clue them or ask them after the, the few minutes before the bell rang and they all picked up their books and ran out of the classroom, is how many were in planning to go on to college and how many were planning to study history? the number of hands that did not raise was really astonishing. 
So what I decided to do, when I thought I may have had something here that I could broaden, I took that old dusty manuscript down from the shelf, which now consists of one and a half chapters of my 15 chapter book. I broadened it to make it almost a, um, a primer of anything to do with the war in Russia in World War II, and basically I even widened it to make it a more of a reference type book of lots of tables and, and appendices in the back to make it a who's who and what happened from 1941 to 1945, especially with, with the concentration in the East. And of course, the penultimate ch chapter is what was happening in Belarus two weeks after the Allies landed on those gravelly beaches at Normandy. So with that, I decided to broaden this, this, this work and from the 150 pages, now it rests at 488 pages, <laughs> to, uh, to my wife's regret because all of a sudden the cost of printing the book almost doubled. Uh, but they said, don't worry about it, don't worry. The more copies you print, the cheaper it gets. I said, well, that's fine until I find out how many errors were still in the manuscript for my so-called amateur proofreading and everything else that went into it. Uh, so with that said, Let's uh, start back around the war in the World War II started, obviously, if most of you know, it's September 1st, 1939, when Germany attacked Poland. Uh, what many people don't know is in, on the 17th of September 1939, Germany advanced only to the Vistula River halfway.